Good morning, Good Legacy morning. Home Church Network. And here we are again on our lovely uh, back porch amongst all our beautiful flowers on a brisk, uh, not brisk, that means cold, but a windy day. You hear the wind chimes in the back and the wind whipping all around us because it's a windy day out here. Um, it's one of the things I love about this spot in the afternoon, especially the wind comes sweeping down the plains here. <laughs> um, we're in the middle of a series on transformation. Yes. It's been um, good the last two weeks we've been talking about. We first talked about personal transformation. Then we talked about transformation homes, homes. how personal transformation affects homes. Right. And I really uh, um, laid into last week that when personal transformation takes place, transformation in homes, then churches will be transformed. Right. So today what we want to look at is transforming churches and what happens. Man, if there's ever been a time in history where her, her <laughs> where churches have been being transformed, it's right now. Yeah. Um, you know, the fact that you guys are tuned in um, on the internet and attending church online uh, 20 years ago was unheard of. Uh, right. It started developing in the last few years some, but in, in 2020, we went to um, many churches that are, are fully uh, online, and uh, some churches had to do it just for a season. Some went back, but like us, some churches have chosen to keep an element of their church as hybrid sure. and as an online church. Uh, many of you for different reasons, some of you because you're not in a, a, a near enough to, to drive to go to Legacy in person. Some of you, because you've made it a choice for your family that this is what works for right. you. And w whichever, we love it. And what we are looking to do at Legacy Church, both Legacy on uh, Church Online, the home, the home Church Network, and the in-person church, right. we're just looking at how does God want to move in His church, in His body, in this day. What does it look like? We're looking at how to create community online, how yes. to create community in person. It's all transforming, and, and we are okay with that. At Legacy Church, we believe in transformation. We believe in the power of transformation in lives, in homes, in individuals, and in church. And so... It's what we're called to. Right. Part of the vision of Legacy Church and Legacy Center is to see cities transformed. Right. And in order to see cities transformed, then we've got to have that personal transformation, the transformation in homes and churches that are willing to transform. Um, revival happens in a church when it happens in its people. Yes. Listen to that again. Revival happens in a church when it happens in its people. So churches being on fire for God will cause cities to experience his presence. Yes. But in order for churches to be on fire for God, people have to be on fire for God. Yes. And that's such a churchy statement. I hate to use it, but I don't know any other way to say it. Just put it this way. They have to be passionate about their relationship yeah. with the Lord. Thank you. They have to be passionate. It has to mean something. It has to be real to just say it. And, and they have to be living it. 24-7. Has to be kept fresh. Yeah, it's not just a, a, a weekend thing. It's not just a, when you're tuning in. Yeah, I wouldn't thing. do well if you just talk to me once a week. or Can if you, you imagine? Just talk to me when other people were around. If, if we didn't have a one-on-one -on -one private relationship, right. our, our public relationship wouldn't And, and let's matter. get real. I remember when we first got married, how sometimes you felt like it was easier for me to be open and talk in a, a, a public space than one-on-one. -on -one. Yes. And and you had to help me grow in that because I didn't see it. But it was, um, it was almost like I would perform in public mm -hmm. and do all the niceties and things you had to do, but then at home not do it. And that was very hypocritical because I was being one thing in public and something different at home. You know, I've told the story before, one of my kids on the way home <laughs> from church one day saying, Daddy, is there any of that niceness that you used at church left for us? And I'm like, golly, just slay me between the eyes. Why don't you? And I don't remember which one of the precious rugrats said it, but they were so true. It was so true. Here I could be the thing at church that everybody had to see, that everything everybody needed me to be. But on the way home, all of a sudden it's rah, 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 and and, and it, it is so easy for us to live that way. And yet, if we're going to see truth transformation, we have to be convicted right. 
right. by the Holy Spirit to live in a way that is releasing His love daily in us, not just in church, not just at work, not just around people, but around our families. And that's why it is so important. So our churches will will see the revival that we desire and, and then it will spill over into the cities. But first it has to happen in the church. So right. just as individual transformation spills over um, into families. So when families are transformed, it'll spill over into our church communities. You know, uh, um, moms and dads who are loving the Lord are, are going to be more apt to be involved in community service and right. more apt in serving in church and serving as the church goes into the community. Right, because we'll be looking for every uh, possible place to love your neighbor and to, to right. live that out loud, as Orange says. We just finished a series on the grace of God, to learn about grace, and we said that grace uh, is, um, we're saved by grace, but we're also, that in God's grace, he has created gifts or good works for us to do right. and gifted us with power to do those good works. When, when people are loving on the Lord, the grace of God compels them to do good works. That's right. And so they're going to be compelled to be involved in church as it reaches into the community. So again, it's like you talked about the pebble in the water. It's just going to have a ripple effect. You, you can't help but want to do good works That's right. when you're in love with the Lord. When the Lord has done something to you, it just... Paul said the love of Christ compels me. I used to see that as a driving force. Yes. Like, oh, I'm being compelled to get up and do this. Like it was a bad thing. But the compelling force of the love of the Lord is because he loved me. He first loved me. I want to I love, love others. others. Yeah. That's and so right. there's an outworking of it. So individual transformation, again, it's the... Uh, if a man is being touched by God, his family is going to be touched by God, his church is going to be touched by God, it just spills over and stuff happens. Second Corinthians 3.18 that we've used in this series, and we all with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord are being transformed. We all are being transformed. That's right. Our churches are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another, for this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. So the Lord by His Spirit is transforming our churches. You know, we can talk about church life and how it's changed over the last um, 35 years that we've Ooh. been together serving the Lord. And and when I just think about the, the, the way worship has changed, the way gathering has changed. I know there are some people, especially diehards, that really don't like the in-person or the um, uh, online gathering. And there are people who say it's going to destroy the church. I don't believe that. No. I need you to hear me say, I believe that community can be created, is created in so many different ways. The fact is, Everybody watching this is in community of some sort. Sure. It's just a choice of whether you've invited Jesus into that community right. or you're inviting your community into where you're getting to know Jesus. Right. Are you letting your worlds collide? Because it's happening. You're having community. Because community is just common unity or places where people are together. Where you've built relationships. Yeah, and where you're getting to know one another. Right. And so... That, that is so important that happens. And I, and I believe that historically the church has held on to the way they do things. And the danger with any church community or any church group is to get set in their ways, refusing to change, to say this is, I mean, the, the, the death sentence over a church is we don't do things like that. Mm. We don't do it. It doesn't work that way around here or we can't do that. And that old refrain of we don't do it around here is, is what has kept many churches stuck in their old way of doing things and they didn't transform and uh, people refused to grow and to change. And uh, what happens is the dying process starts. Mm. If you refuse to grow and change, the dying process will start. Yeah, there, There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Yeah, God refuses to be locked in. He he. he... <laughs> he has proven himself over and over again that he will yep. not let man him him in Amen. into a box. Amen. You know, under under the old covenant, Melinda, um, the children of Israel, the Israelites, were led with a cloud by day and a fire by night, and those represent Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. They represent the leading of Holy Spirit and His work leading us today and leading Christ church from one degree of glory to another. We talked about that scripture from one degree of glory to another. I believe not only are, are we doing that personally in our homes, our homes are growing in the glory, 
but our churches, we are going from one degree corporately as Christ leads us from one degree of glory to another. I believe he's leading the church into transformation. He is leading us into change deeper in levels of God's glory. He's leading us from glory to glory. So the Lord, the spirit of the Lord is the one doing transformation in the church. Yes. The spirit of the Lord is the one doing transformation in the church. And if that is so, for me to say, we don't do it that way, or this is not the way that I want to do it, or I don't like that. You know, it's easy for us to say it's the Lord leading the church and the Lord building the church. It's easy for us to say that, but when the Lord starts leading us in directions we're not comfortable with, it is hard for us to say, yes, Lord. You know, and I'm talking, I'm speaking to pastors and leaders here when I say this. Any of you pastors that are tuning in to watch this, you know, one of the the things that I heard over and over in 2020 was people saying, we've got to get back to normal. We've mm-hmm. got to get back to normal. And yet when I think about what 2019 and 18 and 17, what was going on, there was a lot of complaining. Now, pastors don't always complain where people can hear it because they don't want you to hear that. But people were not coming to churches frequently. Most churches, that will be honest, they were seeing people attending uh, once a month or every other week. People's attendance had backed off. Down. I recently read right now in America for the first time ever, less than 50% of our population attends church regularly. Wow. Now, I don't know if that's accounting for people who are online, but folks, I'm going to tell you, some of us will fall into the habit of watching a service online and thinking that we're attending that church or we're in community with them. But listen, just watching a service online doesn't mean you're in community. If you're not responding, growing, and serving in some capacity outside of your home, don't kid yourself. You're just watching a service online. And I don't want us to fall into a trap. Having said that, we are having to transform to figure out how do we do community online? You know, I applaud our online campus pastors, um, uh, Josiah Palmer and Victoria Palmer, um, for the sake of uh, uh, revealing the truth. Victoria is our daughter. And uh, we love Josiah and Victoria and the way they're working to think outside the box. Um, recently coming to us and saying, hey, we want to try this new thing. And, you you know, for me, it would be immediate to say, well, that's not going to work. We don't do it that way. (laughs) If I fall into my old school with, you know, because even me, I have fought with getting everybody back. Do we get it? And, 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 and it, it, I know that's gotta be frustrating for them. Cause sometimes I'm like, we got to get the people back, but what about, no, if they're online, that's fine. No, but we, because we are learning and I'm being transformed in the way I think. But the one thing that I know right now that they're working to do and that we know must happen is if you're in the online campus, there has to be community. There has to be common unity. There has to be outreaches, outreach services and things for you to do. And so we are looking as the spirit of the Lord does the transformation. What does it look like? Mm-hmm. And we have to be willing. And, and, and uh, again, I'm speaking to pastors and leaders who say that we've always had this one way to do it. When I heard people saying we've got to get back to the, the, the normal, I knew then that we were not learning what the Spirit of God was trying to teach us in 2020. And we were missing it to think that we've got to quit doing one thing and get back to something. The fact is, online presents such an opportunity to reach so many people. Sure it does. So many, and many churches that are continuing to do this are saying they are reaching more people than they ever reached. Church, don't you want to reach more people than you've ever reached? And so for us, it's listening to the Spirit of God and and listening to how... He wants to transform the church. What does in-person church need to look like? What does online church need to look like? What does church need to look like in homes? What, what, what is the future of the church? I believe if we will lean in and listen, Holy Spirit will reveal to us, just as he's doing, what he wants to do and how the church, the church has the same mission that it's always had, the same commission. And the same gospel, we are not changing the gospel. We are not watering down the gospel. Anyone who says 
that we're watering down the gospel by being online. You are completely ignorant of what we're doing. We are not changing the gospel, but methods change. And I know I've had old hardline pastors argue this with me. When I say methods change, they'll say it was good enough for Paul and Silas. It's good enough for me. Well, what we're doing is we're endeavoring to learn how to do it better. Obviously, the Lord has been doing some deconstructing of the way we've done things in the past. So now we're endeavoring to hear what he says and to do it more efficiently and more effectively so that the kingdom of God is advancing in us personally and advancing in our communities through participation and communication and then how that transforms the very physical communities we live in. Absolutely. And listen, you can say, well, give me that old time religion if it was good enough for them, but you don't do anything else the old time way. You're not riding a horse and buggy to work. No. Uh, So why is it okay for some things to use technology of the day, but others not. Church, we need to catch up. We need to catch up and see how can God use this to make a difference. And so that's what we're doing. And Paul, in writing to the church in Galatia, expressed his deep concern about their growth as a church and their transformation in Christ. He explained the anguish that he felt It was like a woman in childbirth until the process of transformation had taken place and Christ was formed in them. He said it this way, Galatians 4, 19. My little children, for whom I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. Uh, The passage translation says it this way. I'm sorry, I think I just had a nap for dinner. I'll read it. You are my dear children. But I agonize in I agonize over this now. <laughs> <laughs> I agonize in spiritual labor pains once again until the anointed one will be fully formed in your heart. So good. So listen, he says, here he is. He is the father of this church because he planted the church. Right. Much like we did with legacy. And so here he is, he says it 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 is anguish like that of a Of course, I don't think mothers would have thought very well of him saying that, but he says, I'm like a mother giving birth because I'm in anguish until Christ be fully formed in you. And so I I know that he was using every means of the day to try to get across what he was trying to teach them. And and he says, though though they'd already been saved and they're part of the kingdom of God, he didn't say he was trying to get them saved. He says that they are in Christ, but now he's desiring to see Christ fully formed in them. This is the work that is taking place in us and in our church right now. This is the transformation. We have received Christ as you have received him, Paul said, so grow in him. So this process of transformation is taking place in our church as we are seeking God. What is ours to do? We believe God has called Legacy Church to be a part of city transformation. We believe we've been called to be a part of racial reconciliation. Then how does that look? What do we do? We believe we have been a part, we have been called to be a part of seeing uh, the, the lives of men and women change so that the families can change, so that better communities, and, and so it makes a change in our, in our present circumstances. Yes. But what does that look like? That's what we have to look for as Christ is fully formed in us, in our homes, and in our church because though they're already a part of the kingdom, there's still a work of transformation that Paul is saying that needs to be done as Christ is being fully formed in their hearts. And this is the work that I believe is taking place in us right now. The church must look, must endeavor to grow and transform Uh, while never changing the truth of the gospel, while we're not changing what we preach, we're not changing the gospel, but we're looking at how, what does the transformation that Holy Spirit is doing in the church look like right now? And what are we doing as we're going from infants in Christ to being fully formed followers of Christ? What is it that he is requiring of us? Because we, the people of God, are being transformed by the Spirit of God. It is happening. Yes. It is happening Yes. as we embrace. And I'll tell you, any of you that have struggled with, I don't know if church can be done this way, or I don't know what I think about that. You know, um, all of you, you need to understand that people that show up in person at a legacy service, 
Some of them are coming from very traditional backgrounds. Maybe they've never seen anything so exuberant. Maybe they've never seen anything quite like that. So all of us at our different stages of transformation, yes. I remember when I came from a very traditional church and saw very expressive worship, I loved it. But it was a little scary at first because I'd never seen anything like it. It was awkward. I didn't know when you put your left hand up or your right <laughs> hand up or, you know, when was good to do the whole victory or, you know. So I learned as I went, as I grew, I was transformed. My worship was transformed. The way I worship, I should say, was transformed. The way I loved him, the way I expressed myself to him was transformed. But it didn't happen overnight. It happened over time. Time. And so I believe all of us are being transformed and changed from one degree of glory to the another, to the another, the another. <laughs> it's to a journey. Another. It's a journey and we are doing this together. So we have to move with the Spirit of God when He shows us what God's doing in the earth. And we have to move with the Spirit of God as He's teaching us how to extend His kingdom. Yes. What does that look like? You know, I, I, I don't want to get stuck here and say, this is it. This is the future. This is the what God is doing in us now. But we don't want to make anything become the normal and be uh, unwilling to move into what is next. No, I he, want to be like Lester Summerall. He said he always wanted to yeah. be on the cutting edge, the forefront of whatever Amen. God was doing. Yes, he's the God that was, is, and is to come. So I think, thank God for what we were, for what we are, and for what we oh, are to come. To we mm -hmm. want to be all, we want to just move on with it. So as he leads us into new levels and new freedom as his people, and as he confronts social injustice, and as he shows us how to love people the way God loves people, we have to be willing to change and grow. We have to be willing to transform. The church has to always be an instrument of societal change. Now, let me say that differently. The church has always been an instrument of societal change. You can look back through history at great men of God who stood and declared truth. Now, there were some who were uh, more cowardly in their message and didn't, didn't stand up and speak truth. Some compromised. Some compromised. But overall, the church has, has been an instrument of societal change, and God will use it for that. The real church, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, will not stay stagnant or settled. It will move on. Now, I'm not talking about a museum of what was. I'm talking about what he's doing now. And so we stand with God against anything that has hurt other people. Sure. Legacy Church, we will stand with God as he moves forward, as he moves his church forward. Anything that destroys the lives of families and anything that has oppressed the freedom of others, we stand with the Spirit of God as he dismantles old kingdoms and old theologies and old thoughts and oppression that has held people in bondage, I will, I will unapologetically stand with the Spirit of God as He destroys anything that oppresses women, oppresses people, oppresses other people of other colors, people of other genders, people of other thoughts, I will stand against anything that breeds oppression. Old religious thoughts that keep certain people out of the kingdom of God because they don't have the right to find repentance and hope and grace because you don't believe God loves them. I will not have give place to that. Legacy Church will leave a legacy that there is hope for all people, right. that there is salvation for all, that whosoever will may come, and that the grace of God is able to change the hardest heart, the vilest offender who truly believes that moment from Jesus a pardon receives. We will believe that for all. And so we will stand with the poor and with the oppressed. We believe that the gospel it, it, it is imperative. It, 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 it includes making the world a better place. Yes. That, that the gospel calls us to make the world a better place for all. That transformation is a part of the gospel. That when Christ is in a heart, in a life, in a church, that through that heart, life, family, home, and church, communities will be transformed. And so we, I'm just saying, Legacy Church, online church, in-person church, 
Anybody who's a part of the Legacy Center, we will be a part of transformation. And we will keep listening to Holy Spirit like the cloud by day, the fire by night, asking him, what is next? Papa, where do we move? How do we move? What is it you've called us to do? And we will do that with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look, I just want to challenge all of you. Um, find what part of transformation God is breathing on in your life right now. Is he speaking to a specific thing? Is there something you know he's trying to bring you out of the old and into the new? And, and, and just allow him to do that. Maybe this week, take some time to every day just to write down. Maybe ask him questions, Holy Spirit. What is it you're trying to transform in me right now? I believe if you ask him, he'll show you. Yes. And, and then ask him, how can you be a part of seeing a church that is transforming the people in its community? How can you serve as part of the body of Christ? What does he challenge you? And Marlene, our, our dear friend, Pastor Marlene Yo once said, the thing that makes you mad may be the thing he's wanting to change through you. So what is it that's making you mad in these days? Maybe God wants to use you as a transformation force in that very thing. Yeah. You can do it. We can do this. We can see God transform our homes, our, our churches, and our cities. It's going to happen. It is happening. You get to be a part of it if you want to. Amen? Amen. Amen.